Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be covering a really quick video that I received in again from Robert over at PR Bush Wheels. Um, Robert's actually completing a machining operation that I think is really interesting to show, uh, mainly because he's reflecting the accuracy of his machine. Um, I can't stress enough how you guys really want to take your time, get your axis calibration set in. I know you're excited to get the new machines running. Um, he's taken his time, got the machine dialed in. He's actually running uh, this part on MDF first. He realizes he will be stepping up to aluminum after he validates the integrity of the uh, G-code. Once again, if you guys are running CAM software that supports using um, a simulator, you can run the simulator. And again, that simulator is there for a reason. It's there to find any surprises, as he'll discuss in the video. Again, uh, to watch the video really defines uh, the level of accuracy he achieved. So I'm just going to play. It's only two minutes long. Check it out. All right, Vince, here we are. Uh, you can see the machine up and running. Um, we got our G-code loaded. Uh, there's our toolpath. It's uh, doing very well. I'm really happy at the moment. Uh, we're doing a test run in MDF just to uh, kind of check the toolpath. I want to make sure there's no surprises for, before we get into the... Uh, aluminum milling so uh, it's an easy cheap way of doing it uh, you don't waste any uh, material other than MDF and you can actually see the, uh, the finish that it lays down uh, so I'll kind of skip through and uh, I'll pick up here on the other side all right Vince you can see the uh, we're at the end of the uh, tool path here almost and uh, it's just going around right now uh, Taking off just a little bit of the uh, the little little uh, steps you see there uh, going down the sidewall, you know the end mill is just barely touching those little ridges and it's just smoothing the operation out. So uh, we'll show you the finish here when it comes up uh, uh, when it's all done. So stand by, we'll we'll catch you here a little later. All right, Vint, we're here at the finish of the uh, tool path, and uh, it's not too bad. I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, uh, the smoothness in it, and uh, like I said, I can always go back and tweak a few things, uh, maybe clean it up a little better, but uh, overall, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty dang cool. And um, I'll show you the accuracy test here coming up. I took my model part, drop it in, and oh my goodness, it's like a vacuum fit. It's incredible. Um, almost needed an air hose to uh, to break the seal to get it out. But um, but you can see it's a uh, it's not it doesn't have the uh, recess yet for the uh, the wheel hub, and that that'll be coming later on. So uh, thought thought you might get a kick out of that. So we'll talk to you later. Once again, guys, um, I want to thank Robert. I'm going to put his link to his website. If you haven't checked it out, please do. He's he's really amazing at his craft. Um, and again, his application requires uh, a very high detailed amount of accuracy when you're dealing with molds. Many of you are. Um, and again, you put the time in and you're going to get it out. That's why I say follow the steps outlined when most of you message me. I'll let you know right away. Um, how to get the machine dialed in as far as the measuring characteristics. You have to perform access calibration. If you're using a high-end tool, uh, preferably a Mitatoyo, uh, you're going to really be able to dial that machine in. And, t and again, I know they're not cheap. A test dial indicator is really going to provide you the best accuracy because, again, the higher the resolution of the tool, that's what's going to yield the utmost imprecision for your robot. So keep that in mind. I know some guys are dealing with wood, and they'll say, well, you know what, I don't care about that. Um, and again, that's totally up to you. You can always recalibrate later on if you do decide to change substrates that require a tighter tolerance level. But overall, it's typically easier to do it the first time because you'll find that if you're running a machine that has a really tight tolerance level and you don't really care about tolerance dealing with um, inaccurate substrates like wood, you really, you'll never have to do it again. So it's something just to keep in mind. Um, overall, this video demonstrates, you know, 
if you put your time in as far as learning your end mills, and that's another topic I wanted to bring up. Uh, you could see how fast his machine was running. He's obviously not a novice. He understands what he's trying to do. Um, a lot of questions always come in about how fast can I run my machine and what do you recommend for feed rates. I have never had a client, and I, I can't emphasize this enough, I've never had a client, whether it be commercial industry or personal industry, message me and say the machine is not turning out parts fast enough. Um, typically, that's never the case. If that is the case, and once again, I've never personally experienced it, but if it is the case, typically there's other venues there that may be adjusted to correct those variables. But what typically happens is machines are thrown together very quickly. Um, the end user is excited about getting their machine up and running, and therefore they lack the attention to detail to get it dialed in as far as access calibration. Um, I don't consider a machine finished myself until it's run for a good couple weeks because the end user is going to find all the little bugs, anything that may be there, they'll find that and be able to dial it in even more, tweak it a little more, and go from there. there this is not an exact science when you're running it yourself and you're alone. You know, you guys are going to find it out. Many of you already have. So keep that in mind. Again, this video is really, really helpful in defining what you actually can achieve. And again, it's just a matter of you putting your time in. And Robert, of course, definitely has done that. That being said, I'm getting a lot of questions, and I wanted to bring up a website because I think it's going to help many of you. I'm getting a lot of questions on different tooling, different feed rates, um, and again, there's so many variables as far as what machine you're using, what spindle you're using, what RPM you're using, uh, surface feed measurements. I mean, there's just a lot of things going on here. I want to introduce you guys, if you haven't used this site already, it's carbidepot.com and it's forward slash resources.htm. I'm going to put the link in the description of the video. Um, and you can come in here real quick. It's free. All of this information is free, and it's basically a lot of reference material dealing with machining. One of the most powerful areas is their troubleshooting area. They've got one for end mills. They've got indexable drilling, uh, indexable milling, tapping, turning, twist mills. If you click on it, it's going to bring up basically a guide. And it's got your problem, it's got your cause, it's got your solution. You're going to find, and this is what I try to discuss with everyone, you're going to find there's not a definitive, uh, there's one definitive problem, and then, of course, under cause and solution, there's always multiple. Okay, and the main reason that is, is machining is not a definitive answer all the time. A lot of times, it's going to derive around um, variables. Again, they don't know what machine you're using. They don't know what spindle you're using. They don't know what end mill you're using. You guys have to decide that by let's say you're having problems with chattering. Click on it. It's going to come over here and discuss the problem of chattering, cause feed and speed too fast, solution correct feed and speed. Not enough rigidity machine and holder, use better machine tool or holder or change condition. I mean, it'll go down, you can actually go down each cause to see what kind of effect it actually pertains to your machine. And you might even find that you may need to do two of the actual solutions together to get the best result. But that's what makes this site so powerful is it really comes down here. It doesn't decide for you what size machine you're using because it's irrelevant. It does decide for you basically all the variables. And I think not many sites discuss a lot of variables. If you come back here again, let's see, go back here again. And I mean, it, there are so many different terms on here. Um, once again, indexable drilling troubleshooting. Here you go. Chipping or breakage, it'll give you a full breakdown. If you guys have questions on measuring, um, again, center drill dimensions. If you're doing uh, counterbore hole dimensions, counterbore, counter, excuse me, counterboard hole dimensions for metric and inches, uh, clamp sizes, uh, math measurements programming, they have a lot of conversion calculators on here, which is really, really helpful. Uh, if you want to convert one, and then you would say, like, let's say you come down here and we'll say one inch. And then we'll say over here to, what the hell, we'll say one micron. We'll convert it. One, one inch is converted to 25,400 microns. 
This is super, super helpful unless you guys want to sit there and do all the math. Once again, I know this website will save you time, but for my new guys out there who are just getting their groove on as far as learning CNC, this site is worth you spending a couple hours on and really just taking some time and going through, and I think you guys will figure out this is really, really powerful. Um, indexable milling troubleshooting. This is a really cool area as well. It gives you some pictures. And again, poor surface finish. Uh, and once again, you just click on anything, and it'll give you the breakdown. So I know this site will come in handy. And again, um, as you guys become more detailed, as you become more in tune with your equipment, you'll be able to pick things up really quickly, especially based on your application. If you're dealing with a lot of aluminum, you'll be able to go through. You'll know exactly where you're at. I would definitely set this as a favorite. I have it a favorite on my computer. And in this way, you guys can just reference anything that comes up. Um, whether it be breaking end mills, I get a lot of questions on that. I get questions on smoking end mills. Um, I mean, it's it's all over the place, and that's why I say it's so many different variables depending upon what you're cutting. I'm not there with you, and of course, um, even Carbide Depot and whoever else you decide to use as reference, they're not there with you either. The big thing here is that you guys have variables. And you, and you once again adjust your variables to find that correct solution. So again, I, I will put this link in my description. I think it'll help many of you. Uh, once again, carbidepot.com forward slash resources dot htm. And you guys can check it out. And again, I hope this video has been helpful. Guys, I've been super busy. I'm certainly not being disrespectful if you message me. Keep in mind, it is peak season. Um, especially manufacturing, everybody is expanding their system, especially when they know um, end of the year is coming. Everybody's, you know, uh, preparing for that. And I just wanted to thank everybody for their patience uh, and, of course, your support. I can't say I love you guys enough. Um, if you do have any questions, you can contact me below. My reference information will be there for contacting. Once again, it's storm2313 at gmail.com. That's my personal email. And if you do need to contact me, you can also contact me through my eBay store. It's eDealers Direct. Um, and I'll definitely have those links below. Thank you guys again.